That's got to be a part of the formula for these Dayton Flyers. Well, all the talk is over. The ball is up, and this one is underway. Already an early season nominee for all-team name of the year. Wan Yang tucked for Omaha, but it is the Flyers in their white, the red trim, working the perimeter, and then the entry pass is quickly taken away, and a good start defensively for Omaha. And that's an important point, Dwight. I think for Omaha to win this game, or at least even be in it, they're going to have to have a superior defensive effort tonight. They cannot come out here and lay down on defense. They've got to play the best defensive game they've played all year. Even if they struggle on offense, they play great defense, they'll give themselves a chance. And that's a good start. Their opponents on the young season are shooting less than 38% from the floor. Long range, left-handed three for Tut won't drop, but it's lost by the... Talked about, you know, he's got to compete. Everybody in black tonight has to compete physically on defense, on the glass, to make this a game. Because if you don't compete with Dayton, they will blow you out of this place. Five on the shot clock. Trying to find the baseline. Can't put hands in. Ball is tapped. Gives Dayton that attitude, that senior tough attitude of how you play Dayton basketball. Shot from three. Won't count if it goes. The side court return. Dayton off to Maui, where they play next week. It will definitely be warmer. I've played the Maui Invitation. That is a terrific venue for college basketball. The key is the success out there. You got to forget you're in Maui. You got to be thinking like I'm in Albuquerque or something. I don't. I don't care what's going on outside the gym. Well, I can understand how someone would mistake the two. <laughs> I'm sure Albuquerque is beautiful this time of year. It just doesn't hang with Maui. Birthplace of my sister. That's about all I got. It's a shot for three. It's going to rattle around off the backboard and out. Gibson can't get his first long distance effort to fall and. And we played almost two minutes, and we are at zeros on the scoreboard. Mike Sell, top and left of the key. Shot for three, back iron away. Mike Sell gets it from the near wing. Nope, that one isn't going to drop either. Both teams extremely cold. Those were wide open threes that I think you'd normally see Dayton expect those to go down. Two failed attempts thus far for Chapman on the Dayton side. Baseline movement, switch to the left hand, and kindness from the rim. Gibson gives his team the lead. And Matt Pyle did JT Gibson a big favor. He moved Obi Toppin out of the post, out to the perimeter, which let JT Gibson drive to the hole knowing that the guy who can block your shot at any moment in time wasn't at home. Inside the lane and a soft finish at the other end for Jalen Crutcher. And back on even terms. Gonna play two games in 48 hours, less than that slightly. Count the actual times of tip-off. It's a five-day road trip. It spans about 4,500 miles and covers all four time, major time zones in the continental U.S. Long shot, no good. Rebound, ball is slapped away. Tuck puts it up, and he is fouled on the missed shot. Tending. So goaltending gives Omaha. A two-point lead. The visitors two of five from the floor, one of four, the Dayton Flyers. Mike Sell's going to try. That's way off. Mm. Missed everything except the back court, the lower portion of the backboard. That's a bad miss. And you could see coming off his hand, Dwight. We were in a perfect angle to see it. That shot had no chance from the start. Pile shot blocked by Top and the follow-up. That was a great effort on the rebound, but Thornhill couldn't get the ball to drop either. Mike Sell tries again. And that gets a kind bounce and puts the Flyers into their first lead of the night. Dayton with a little bit of full court pressure, man to man, seeing if Omaha can handle things just out of the inbounds, but then backing off and letting them come up the court a little bit. Left side of the lane. Back out high. Shot clock down to 12. Trying to spin his way in. Pile turns up and it won't go. Rebound Toppin. That's tough duty. If you're going to go in against Obi Toppin one on one in the post, that's a tough job all night. Cross court pass. Shot for three. And after missing their first three, that's back to back bombs for the Flyers. 
that despite a cold shooting start, they suddenly find themselves up 8-4. Omaha really needs to get some pattern offense going. They got to run some plays and get somebody open off their offense, not the one-on-one -on -one plays. Again, the shot clock moves into single digits. Again, all this one-on-one -on -one leaves Omaha at the end of the shot clock looking for a desperation heave, and there it is. Well, as desperation heaves go, Gibson is loving that one. What an answer. Rob underneath. Tobin tried to redirect the throw, but it misses. Transition opportunity at the other end. And that one is going to be kindly dropped. The kid will lay with the two pointer. That time Trey Landers attempted the alley oop. But, and when it didn't happen, you could tell it was starting to mess with him a little bit mentally. He just forgot to get back. Didn't get back on defense. He was at the point. He had to get back in that fast break. Really did not effectively, leading to the double mistake the bad alley oop and then the layup at the other end by Omaha. Crutcher. Smooth. He is so smooth and confident with the basketball. That young man knows he can score and just about anybody. Now we've seen both sides of it here in the early going. We've seen some, some poorly executed half-court basketball. We've also seen some really nicely taken shots. Mike Sell misses. Had his own rebound momentarily. And that's the mentality you have to have to beat a program 15 years like Coach Hansen has been. Full court pressure out of the timeout. Still early going. Omaha 45% from the field. It is slightly better than Dayton's 44. The only stat that matters is the score line. Toward the lane, back out to Gibson. Shot clock inside, double digits. And that ball's thrown away. Turnover. A turnover that, you know, I think. There's no way that Omaha can stay in this game if they're going to give Dayton extra possessions through turnovers. Well, that takes care of that now, doesn't it? <laughs> and by the way, you got to find a way to defend Obi Toppin down there. Somebody has got to get in front of him at all times, shield him from the ball as much as you can. He just can't touch the ball if you're Omaha because he's just too good. Baseline move and a wild shot. Transition opportunity. Mike Sell to the corner. Good transition defense by Omaha. Coming down and able to stop the fast break and maintain their position. Long distance shot for three front iron. Mike Sell gets the rebound. Games, you know, like for 40 years. He did my games at Ohio State. That's amazing. But it must be big. We know we're gonna have we know we're gonna have a good officiating crew and a well-officiated game with this crew out there. Very better. Pump fake, baseline drive, little contact, but it's Watson with the finish. Showing his athleticism and his ability to go to the rim and make some shots. I mean, he's a three-point shooter by trade, but showing right there that he can maybe get some points in the lane, too. Good offensive movement that time for Omaha. Exactly what you said they needed to do, move away from the 1v1. That's exactly right. And that time they got an easy layup, even with Obi Toppin in there, because they played team basketball on the offensive end. That's that's the way they're going to be able to stay in this game with Dayton. How about that? That's an NBA yeah. shot that probably should have been hit from WNBA lanes in order to go. It was a bad NBA shot is what it was. Jalen Crutcher shouldn't be shooting that shot. How about Toppin? Like any guard. Wow. I mean, that, that, that just shows you what he brings to this game. And that's not something that you see a lot of 6'9 kids able to do. You know, drive the court like that and make that finger roll layup. That, that's just that special stuff that you know, we get to see. I don't see a lot of 6'9 kids, period. Yeah. But, I mean, his... His skills, the ability to do that is just, it's, it's mind-blowing. In and out on the three-point attempt from the right side. Gibson can't connect quickly the other way. But once more, Omaha does a nice job in their transition defense. Well, Toppin came into the night needing four dunks to reach 100. Turnover Flyers. There's your man. The basketball program, too. Those teams are getting better. They're getting out. They're playing more teams nationally. I know Purdue Fort Wayne's got Ohio State this week. So you're going to see more Summit League teams out there playing bigger and, and better opponents like Dayton and you know, trying to make a name for their conference. 
Well, it's college sports. It's a business, but it's still college kids playing. And you can invest in a basketball program with much smaller numbers than the investment it takes in a sport such as football. And you can win a lot faster in basketball with the right players than you can in football. Well, after a couple of previous plays and transition defense by Omaha, they got caught that time. And it's the finish at the opposite end there for Watson. Six now, the advantage, the largest for either team. Omaha has to be careful. We've seen this how many times at UD Arena. Suddenly the teams look at the scoreboard, they're double digits down. They can't quite figure out when it happened. Shot for three. Nope. And they get to take a bad shot, and Dayton comes down and is able to put an offensive possession together. This is a dangerous time for Omaha. Down six. You know, this game can get out of hand real quick if you take bad shots and you're not patient on the offensive end, because Dayton will make you pay in that situation. Minimal contact. Wow. And an easy finish. Great hustle. Chapman on the wing there for the Dayton Flyers. And the dribble drive to the right side. And to play that point guard spot every game, Rodney Chapman can come out and take some of that pressure off. He's a great passer. You saw there he can shoot. He's experienced. And an upperclassman transfer. Rodney Chapman can be a really good player for the Flyers team. Pile and they're fighting hard. He has he hasn't done a whole lot on the score on the scoreboard, but I'll tell you, Matt Pyle has been playing hard and throwing himself around out there physically. Bad shot. Robinson did all the work at one end to steal that ball and get possession, and then he blew it all up. I mean, you're gonna work that hard to come down and take that shot. And that's a good way to get beat by 30 against the Dayton basketball team that really does not let you make mental mistakes. Like that. Watson on the follow. He's got four points now. Chapman leads the way with six for the Flyers. 840 remaining in the first. Omaha in desperate need of a good offensive possession. Not a one-on-one -on -one move, but a good offensive possession. And then another one-on-one -on -one move gets blocked. Yeah, Johnson with the block from behind. Can't get the put back to go. Well, They've done enough work to be in this game, but they just cannot find the finish. And that's and that part of that is the shots you're taking. I mean, these, there's been a lot of bad shots on the Omaha end. You know, they've they've done enough to be in this game, except recently defensively, but their offense has been bad in terms of taking shots. They've got to get better on that side of, of the court. We talk about first half. Johnson, Cohill, Crutcher, Landers, and Watson now on the floor. For the home team. And the warning lights are blinking yellow right now for Omaha because down 25-12, you know, under eight minutes in the first half. This is the time when you don't have the luxury of not having a good possession. You've got to score, and they're not able to do so. And here comes Dayton in the fast break. Right down the middle. Go Hill, no. Johnson, no, but he's fouled from behind. Here are you offensively. Grew to 13 points. That's the largest lead thus far. It's a 9-0 Dayton run. Omaha has not scored in over three minutes, almost four. And, you know, it was 16-12 at the 11-minute mark. And it's been that long since Omaha has been able to get the get a bucket. Just every in your offense, you've been practicing it all year. You got it. You got to go out there. You got to trust it. You got to run it, and you got to let your offense sometimes make your points. Some one-on-one's fine every now and then, but you don't have to do that every time. Trust your offense. A little movement around the perimeter, and then the shot was taken well off the mark. We've seen a couple of pretty bad misses by Dayton from three-point range, but they're they're surviving it at this point. It helps when you know you miss a shot. You sometimes badly, but the other team can't get anywhere near the rim, just like that possession. Landers. Easy. Way too easy. That's just way too easy for Dayton. Omaha didn't put up much of a fight in that fast break situation. We've talked already a couple of times about this.
stretch, multiple games in just five days, to traveling over four time zones. And they're, they're flying out to Pullman, Washington to play next. Sometimes the lessons, you certainly know this, sometimes the lessons are the tough ones. Yep. Two-handed block right underneath the basket. That brings the fly. ...his space without making contact with the body or with the arm, any place other than the basketball. Excellent job by Trey Landers, and that's the Dayton defense. We talked about pregame that really can elevate this Dayton team to the next level. Flyers really haven't allowed the shot clock to come in to influence thus far in the first half. Should have kept my mouth shut. Quick hands, though, defensively. What a good job by E.B. Watson getting back in that transition. Didn't allow J.T. Gibson to take it all the way to the rim like he wanted to in that fast break situation. Nearly an exchange of steals. Shot off the back iron. Under 30% now from the floor. Omaha. The 68-54 loss at Wichita State then came back with wins over Midland and Bethune-Cookman. And then six days ago, fell at Colorado State to begin this three-game road trip. They've got back-to-back -back home games once they finish up in Washington State. Topping. There's really nothing more to be said. And it just shows you how difficult he is to guard. He has the ability to put the ball on the court and drive the hole, as we've seen earlier. He can make threes. He can post up. He, and he can rebound the basketball alley-oops. Every facet of the offensive game, Obi Toppin has that ability to succeed, which makes him a very difficult matchup. Nice job. The line's kind of flattened a little bit. But for the most part, I think you see Omaha giving good effort. And I think that because they're not really running their stuff, they're pressing too hard, they're forcing the ball too hard, they're trying to go, go, go to the rim and make something happen. Well, at this level, when you're playing the Atlantic 10 team like Dayton, you can't do that. You have to be a team out there. Trey Landers responds to three-point field goal shooting heating up for the Flyers. 5 of 13, that's nearly 40%. Pyle continues to do the work underneath, high off the glass, and he gets the gentle roll. This is a guy, 6'8", 240-pound junior from Goddard, Kansas. He is a medicinal chemistry major and a 3.9-plus GPA student, academic All-American. When they return from a road trip, he goes straight to the library. And preseason All-Summit League, you know, conference honors. I mean, the young man can play. Average 12 points last year. And is really getting in there almost a double double this in trouble. But boy, you can't turn the ball over because Dayton will turn that into easy points every time. Three and a half to play in the opening 20. Opportunity perhaps for Oma to put a little run together. Just get some confidence, and that's a good start as the shot is dropped. It's a crucial start from Omaha. They needed to, dri to dig their way back out of that hole. And it starts with getting some confidence on the offense and making a shot. And seeing if they can stand up and play some defense here against Dayton. They've been, they've been decently successful, Omaha has, in the half court. It's in the transition that Dayton's really been able to make a lot of things happen. Wide open look for three. Back iron and away. Toppin gets a hand of the rebound. But it'll be Omaha the other direction. They've hit three consecutive field goals now. Starting to get a little confidence. Tut to the corner. Into this game. It starts with great defense. But it, it comes down to the offensive side and looking for the shot that's in your game, in your offense, and making a shot when you have the opportunity and not having turnovers like stepping out of bounds in that last possession. I think a good goal would just be get it inside double digits and down 14. They had possession and a chance to get it closer. I would think if Omaha can get inside double digits by half, they're going to take that as a goal. It's going to be difficult with E.B. Watson making shots like that. That's a deep three and tremendous. That was a long way away. We talked about bench development. You know, seeing E.B. Watson out there in the fast break, hitting long, difficult three-point shots like that. That's that bench development we talked about. You want to see young men coming in off the bench and making things happen. In our halftime report.
37-20, Flyers in the lead, shooting just under 54% from the field. That includes 40% from beyond the arc. That's good ball movement. That's simple finish for Ryan Mikesell. And Obi Toppin showing another part of his game, and that his ability to pass. It's underrated. That young man can pass the ball very effectively. And there's Ryan Mikesell leading Dayton. Or they can get a second consecutive, drop it down to 12, maybe even 11 points somewhere in that vicinity instead. They look up, and it's now 22. Now that's tough. But now, you know, hey, look, there's only one way back. And that's get down the court and hit a two or a three and go play some defense. Left open just outside the free throw line. Akinwale puts the ball in. 42 22. That's four consecutive field goal attempts made by Omaha, and yet the deficit has increased. Because during the same stretch, the Flyers have made three of three, including a couple of threes. They finally miss a three of four. Final minute of the opening half. Still time. Now 10 on the shot clock. Get ready for a desperation shot at the, at the shot clock buzzer again. Shot for three. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. Even Gibson, it was like a sigh of relief. Just like Coach Hansen drew it up. <laughs> Final possession we suspect of the opening half. Mike Sell penetrates and is. He, he he can do this. He can play with toughness and with grit. Another person down there who's giving Dayton those key physical plays. Half court heave. It'll count if it goes. It does not. Turn it over and make points out of it quickly. Well, they are third in the country right now, averaging 22 and a half helpers on a per game basis. It's early, but that's a, an outstanding number. The only number that matters for Omaha is to continue this hot field goal shooting by improving their shots from three-point range. And that was a good look by Matt Pyle, but just the mere fact of Obi Toppin standing there caused Matt Pyle to short on that and to really try and get it off quickly as opposed to getting it off smoothly. That's what happens. You have a shot blocker like Obi Toppin in the game. You just you short on things a lot. Cross-court pass. Mike Sell in the corner. Opposite corner. Back out top. Extra pass. Doesn't pay dividends, though Toppin gets the rebound. Great ball movement by Dayton on that possession. Really moved the ball around, forcing Omaha to play defense both sides of the court the entire time. And then you got two offensive rebounds. That, I, you know, it's, I don't think so. I think there's things he can work on. I think, you know, defensively, one on one, when it's a not a shot blocking situation in the post where you gotta you gotta stand tall, you gotta get in front of your guy, you can't let him catch the ball in the post. I think that's something he can still work on, but his shot blocking ability is so unbelievable that he can make up for a lot of the you know, development that he doesn't have yet in that one on one post game with the ability to block shots. Twenty-two, the Flyers' largest lead of the night. Obi Toppin closing in on 100 dunks. And that was a great pass by Ryan Mikesell. Able to see Obi Toppin to the point where he's able to take it up high and gotta appreciate that dunk. It wasn't just you know a stand underneath the rim and dunk. It was a good five, six feet out. He had to fly to the rim to get that dunk down. Spin move and the finish. As Hughes gets the ball to drop. Top and no. Gets the rebound. Gets the bounce. The layoff. That one doesn't fall. Omaha starting to let their inside competitiveness slip a little bit. And that's getting that up. It's an athletic family to be sure. Brother. Defensive tackle with the Ohio State football Buckeyes. College sports world. The Sanders family can focus on this basketball game. 
sure quite pleased with what they're seeing out of the Flyers. Good ball movement. Front rim away though, Hughes. Chapman. It wasn't a good shot, but it was the best of bad shots. It was made. No, Rod no, no, no. Great shot. Yeah, Rodney Chapman, I mean, showing his range. If that's the way he's going to shoot all anymore in college basketball. He used to be able to do that in college basketball. Not anymore. <laughs> A lot of player rotation for the Flyers tonight. Passing. That's good basketball right there. That's, we talk about Omaha trying to score in their half-court offense. That's what I'm talking about. I, you, there's no one-on-one -on -one move there. That was a, a bunch of guys moving the basketball around inside their offense, finding the open three, and burying it. That's how you play winning basketball. Turn around. High glass. Won't go. And that's tough. I mean, Matt Pyle's down there trying to post up Obi Toppin in a one-on-one -on -one game. That's tough. Chapman's three won't go. Toppin gets it back to him. Head of the key. Landers keeps it alive. Lots of hustle out there for Dayton. Not worrying about the fact they're up 24. The Flyers are throwing themselves around, really hustling after the basketball, showing some grit. Landers. Oh. That could have been a foul. It's good, like some contact with Pyle, but Gibson the other way. Back rim. Good work on the boards. Wide open look for three. And that one drops for Gibson. Perhaps the first shot in the long road back from Omaha? Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Got to short up on the defensive end. Right now, Dayton is whipping him on the offensive end of this court. Top it. Yep. We have seen that early in the season. We've seen Dayton not be very effective from the first. You've got to make those free throws. That can cost you the game right there. Second one much better than the first. Johnson checks back in for Dayton. Oh, that's why you got to love Ted Valentine. He's over here during that while the ball's coming out of bounds before it comes out. So they're talking to the fans. Came back way early in the game. I think that reflects what you've talked about a couple of times, just getting to let the energy kind of drive them instead of playing with their heads, working on the things they practice each day. And one-on-one -on -one moves where it's really hard against Dayton players with, you know, good fundamental skills. It's really hard to get them in a position to foul you if you're just going one-on-one -on -one against people. you got to get them out of position first through your offense and then make a move. Good play that time by J.T. Gibson. Can he go the length? No, that was just wild and crazy. You need to pull that back out. That's not the shot you want down you know, a lot. Landers. And then just, you know, Omaha giving it up on the defensive end in transition. That wasn't even a fast break. It was just kind of everybody standing around feeling sorry for yourself if you're Omaha. Well, we looked at the first half, recent seasons for Omaha, and where they've been predicted to finish in the conference, and they have consistently shown the ability to get stronger. You're traveling, yes, but you're getting plenty of rest. You're getting to learn that lesson a bit when they go to uh, when they go to Maui. Because in Maui, you play three games back to back to back, three consecutive days, and by that third day, you're tired. But that teaches you a little something about yourself and about your team. Watson, way too easy. I mean. It's like everybody in a black jersey was prohibited from coming over to help. It's like they had a rule they couldn't help. Evie Watson just, you know, beat his man. It was easy going to the rim. Good patience by Ryan Mikesell underneath there. Dribble drive. Little sitter back iron. A little pitching wedge on the back iron. It's just sat there. Chase Johnson. On the court. Great hands. And a Excellent finish. You just can't at this stage of the game trade baskets. Chase Johnson showing there one of the reasons why he was offered and accepted a scholarship before to play basketball. That's a nice skilled move there. Acrobatic finish for Ruffin. Shot for three. 
round. Used most of the rim, but not all of it. Pile, and you know he uh, he's had a pretty good game. He hasn't been as effective as I know he wants to be, but he has had a pretty good game down there, using his physicality. Eight points, eight rebounds so far. You can see it in the Summit League. That pile is going to be a handful. Talked about the 100th dunk on the horizon for Obi Toppin. Shot from the right wing, and that's right down the middle. And that's a lesson for Chase Johnson. I mean, a young man coming off the bench, you know, redshirt sophomore transfer coming in, and Anthony Grant's going to call a timeout because he must have a great home environment. It can't, however, match this. I mean, Dayton is a very special place to play your home games. JT Gibson's last three gives him 182, and that puts him in sole possession of fifth all time at Omaha. Top and underneath, spin move, short side won't go, gets it back, fingertip roll off the left. Thank you. One block away from entering his school's top 10 all time. 45%. This is the oddity. When this team, the Mavericks, when they shoot 50% as a team from the field, they've won 15 consecutive games. And they're right now at 45%. So they're not far off that mark, but they trail by a bucketful. Right, and it's not, it's not really been their shooting that's been the problem. It's their inability to stop the turnovers and their inability to stop Dayton once Omaha turns it over from making easy points out. I mean, making shots like that can keep you into most games, but not when you're a minus 15 on points off turnovers like Omaha is right now. 5 of 13 from three-point range. Three of those five belong to Gibson. So Robinson has one, and they haven't really been able to get distribution everybody but Cohill on the floor right now has at least one three-point shot today right now Dayton full court press out of the break which is kind of like uh, if you're Omar going really you're pressing us <laughs> come, on, come on guys always something to work on you teach me that every time we're together I mean, it's an 18-point game. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Omaha can get themselves back into it. They're going to need to make some shots and get some stops. Nice by Pyle again. Up, oh, they're going to wave that off. Pyle, hmm, I don't know. It was close. It was, certainly was close. I know it hurt a little bit for you to say that. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Always penalize those big guys, man. Stop it. A little bit. Out of control that time, but found help in the form of Landers. The clock moves inside 11 minutes. Right side of the lane, and that ball is hard, which he did and got fouled. Basketball playing family. Just note that. We could just <laughs> like, maybe not put the years up there or something. Or just saying. I hear you, but the years are there whether we show I mean, them or not. I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> put it right in my eye. 20-point gap between the teams. Still shooting right around 45% from the floor. Dayton at 54%. Nice little turn. Shots off the mark. Well spread out once again by the Dayton Flyers. And, of course, Gibson, who's been the one guy that they've really been able to count on. He's, he's hit 8 of 12 himself. Yeah, he's come to play. That diversification of scoring by Dayton uh, is really, you know, going to be something that coaches in the Atlantic 10 Conference and, and Maui and all the games they got coming up, and they look at Dayton on film, they're going to realize it's going to be tough to guard this Dayton team because you can't just stop one person. There's a lot of guys on this team who can score. Clock ticks into quarter four of this one. Shot from the outside, right in front of the flyer bench. In fact, it's no good. Tut with the rebound. Now Gibson. Got to be careful not to press things. Doesn't want to do it alone. Shot for three. That one doesn't drop to Thornhill. If you're dating, this is the time that, you know, this game is 18 points. 
You can't make mistakes like all levels. That's a player control foul, and back comes Omaha looking to continue their way back down 65 47. Well, even if they can't get all the way back in this game, it's still early in the season. I'm sure that the coaching staff is expecting to see certain things from these guys, like running the offense. How about that block from behind? And then the outlet. Just came into the game. Cole Hill with the finish. Looks like he might have gotten whacked. That was a great block by Obi Toppin from behind and a great outlet pass after he got the block to, to let the fast break take place. Whistle before the shot. Obi Toppin. You beat him, it doesn't matter. You know, he has the ability to block it from any place on the court. And you asked me about what things he can work on. That not letting a player get around him and make the move like that is something he can work on. Something he doesn't have to come back and block from behind. Because guess what? So as, as competition gets more stiff and they play in Atlantic 10 and they play in Maui against Michigan State and everybody else, suddenly those players that go by you are going to be dunking on you. You got to be, you got to have that good fundamental defense to start so you don't let someone get to the rim and you don't have to block it from behind. So a little run for Omaha, a chance to extend it. Tut doesn't realize the ball is there, but it works out from the parking lot. Oh. <laughs> By the way, it's a 15-point game. I mean, you got to give Omaha some credit yeah. for sticking it in. I mean, it's a 15-point game. This game could have easily been 30-plus if they gave up. They haven't given up. Dayton's been a little sloppy with the basketball and let Omaha back into this game a little bit against Omaha. Give Omaha credit, but you know, for Dayton, this is part of the growing process. How, how do you make maintain your mental toughness and not give Omaha this opportunity? That's one way to do it. Throw it. He's lacking. Big picture for Dayton tonight has been their free throw shooting. They've out rebounded Omaha. Again, Dayton challenging Omaha in their full court. A little trap once they cross half court, but challenging Omaha to handle the basketball and be effective with it. Gibson, Hughes, Thornhill, Robinson, and Pyle. Top and Watson, Landers, Crutcher, and Cohill. For Dayton and White. Seven and a half to play. Tough shot. Guaranteeing not that shot. High degree of difficulty. A flyer perspective. Keep the clock moving. Get into your offense. Take up some time. No need to rush. No need to force. Toppin goes to the left hand. That one doesn't drop. That's another, you know, play that I'd like to see Obi Toppin instead of just floating through the rim and trying to towards the rim and trying to shoot that shot on the move, which is tough as you fly through the air. Make a strong move, turn, gather yourself, go straight up. If he goes straight up, there's nobody on this court who's ever going to be able to block that shot. No need to fade or, or lead into the shot. Just turn around strong, go up straight, and take the shot. Mike so Landers. An aggressive follow-up and finish from him. Doing what he does best. The toughest part of the game is where Trey Landers excels. That body. You know, hit that mindset, and then something tough to do. Trey Landers is the guy Dayton can get it done. It's ready. <laughs> you could pretty much draw him up by hand right now. You yes. have the time. You can list all the Division One teams. Top it. Too easy. Way too easy for Omaha. He just two dribbles right to the rim. Somebody's got to step in front of him and say, "No, you can't drive all the way to the rim." That's just bad defense on that possession by Omaha. Back to within 15, Omaha, a chance to cut it even tighter than that. And instead, it's 19. Shot for three. Boom. Thornhill's been looking for it tonight. That's his first made shot. In fact, he had missed all six previous shots from the field.
I just, I don't think you need to say anything. It was like he was parachuted in here. <laughs> it's like somebody flew, the ball, flew over the top of the arena and dropped of those tonight. Ever closer to 100. Needed four. Hughes gets the second. Tighten up the pressure. Pass. The no one. Great pass by Obi Toppin again, showing his versatility on the offensive end and what he can do. Just a terrific pass. To a crowd, Hughes gets in. In the face of good defense by Trey Landers. Trey Landers really contested that shot, did not foul. Good position the whole way. Hughes just made a very good shot. Little fingertip runner there for Chapman, who was trying, I think, to pass the Dolby yeah. top. And when Omaha stepped in the passing lane, Chapman did a good job of going to plan B, which was to make that shot. Obi Toppin showing he can dominate the defensive end, too. And Land Landers a little up and under. Chapman, by the way, has got 13 points now on the night. 21 point advantage inside four minutes remaining. Shot for three from the corner. Hey, two in a row. As we said, Thornhill been looking for that shot, couldn't get it to drop. Now he hits back to back trays. Long distance. Position. In this conference as things go on. Wasn't long ago that Omaha had gotten to within 15 after trailing by 25. The Flyers responded, got it back to plus 20. Up 22 at the moment. Top Landers. Mike Sell. Quite, you know, the the fact that the starters are still in this game, at least four of them, is a demonstration, I think, of Coach Grant's dissatisfaction with the second half and how it's going. Because right now, you know, Dayton just is now winning the second half by a few points. And you got all of these guys out here playing. Coach Grant clearly saying, "I need to develop. I need to develop and, and get some more reps." Because Apples, affectionately known as Uwe Pui. <laughs> Will be topping. It's now Coach Grant getting some of his players out. Chase J Johnson coming in, Matt Host coming in, Obi going out, as you said. Mike Sell for three. That ball, you could tell that shot was not going in from the moment he left his hand. See a couple of those from him tonight, uncharacteristically. Yeah. Fade away. Good tough defense by Ryan Meitzel that time, causing the air ball in the fadeaway. Tuck keeps the possession alive. Three-point miss, then inside, turn. Question, but that starting five is top 25 material. Just north of two minutes remaining in this one. And with the final score at this stage in doubt. Of off the bench, Cohill's out there, Johnson, Greer, and Wilson. Greer and Wilson appearing for the first time in the game. Three point shot is made by Robinson. Gibson and Top and tied now for scoring lead in the game at 21. Hey, and these baskets, you know, they're not going to mean anything for this game, but they might mean something for a game down the road. You know, Jerry Maddow's coming in and making some shots. You never can tell when in some A-10 road game in January or February, he's got to come and play off the bench. And Madison VCU. And if 
you know, if Dayton wants to win an A-10 championship, they're going to have to play well and win games on the road. You take some games. You got to you got to be significantly above 500 and win all your games at home if you want to win the be the A-10 champion. Final 60 seconds of this Tuesday night encounter. The Flyers closing in on a 3-0 start. Cohill with the latest conversion. Top and finish with 21 points and six boards. Crutcher added seven assists. Passing underneath. It's the fifth. A little full court pressure here. Got the ball pushed into the front court by Cohill. There's about a three-second difference, round numbers, between the game clock and shot clock. So the Flyers likely to put up one more. And there it is, short on the three. Chance to improve it a touch on the scoreboard. Got to get the shot off. 